Just got here this morning. It's been raining all night. And it looks like uh looks like our little shelter did pretty good. Pretty dry in here. Alright, so we got a few courses on this morning and uh we're just gonna go run and get some flues. Just getting ready to put this flue in here, and it's a little bit, it's going to be difficult because the flue is leaning that way, but I want to try to, to get it to come up straight a little bit better, and it's all the way against this wall, and it angles towards me as well, so I'm going to try to just get it on there and do the best I can with it. Remember that this is just, uh, this isn't going to be a working flue when it's done, this is just going to be like a chase for the stainless liner to come up through so uh, it's just uh, going to be a pellet liner so it should fit in here no problem and I'm going to try to get that flue back this way towards center a little bit instead of ending up over here um, and then hopefully the 13 by 13 I can get to come I guess my way some more so there's a space between the flues um, anyhow here goes I'm going to try to set this flue without falling in the chimney. That is quite a bit smaller. Quite a bit smaller than that flu. Hmm. So those flues you measured before, those ones were on top of these. That by that one down there is a nine by thirteen. The ones that we took out of here were eight by twelves. So they must have redone them down to this point, or just above that one, I suppose. They must have already put some smaller flues in, and those are the ones that we measured. Um, anyhow, it's not it's, it's not going to make a big deal because this isn't a working flu anyway, but I should have noticed that that flu needed to be a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to mud right around this thing. Boy, it's right up against that wall, coming straight at me. Just so weird. Okay, well I took a little bit of the lean out. I don't think I'll be able to get it to the center, but maybe I can get it coming up. I guess right here. I don't know, it's gonna be ugly. Hopefully nobody will ever see the top. Normally I wouldn't mud this in like this tight, but I don't really have a choice here. And also, this flu's never gonna be used again, so we shouldn't expect it to uh, need to expand and contract because the stainless liner in the middle of it is going to do the expanding and contracting now. We're just getting ready to start laying here and uh, well we've got the uh, the profiles on and marked out with the dory blocks and the line set so uh, it should go pretty smooth from here. Uh, we just spent some time to reorganize and stock out and uh, So we're going to get moving and get about 10 courses to go. 
10 courses brings us to about here. And then we're going to do about four courses of bump out beyond that. And that will bring us to the original height that we had from from the peak of the roof to the top of the chimney was 44 inches. So that's where we're going to end up again. You know the best part about today is? It's a Friday. It's a Friday. Other than the weather. And it's a Friday. I can work standing up. I don't have to work on my knees anymore. That's the toughest part about the first day doing this stuff is you're crawling around on your on your knees trying to lay that brick. Um, so you know what? Before we before we start with the brick, let's uh I'll get that 13 by 13 in there because I can actually just use the, I can stand on the brick to place it in right now, so maybe that's what I'll do first. You think you're gonna try lay some brick today? Might as well. Just gonna sit here and watch. What do you do? You just put water all over it? They're using. I'm trying to use this stuff. I'm trying to mix it up so it's usable. Just stick. without any kind of support. Uh, so dumb. I mean, it looks a lot better now than it did. The flues. Yeah. Let's see how much I can lean it out off this other one. I'm glad we're just putting liners inside of them and not trying to make it usable. That'd be a lot tougher. I mean, it'd be cheaper just to make them usable. I mean, to make, just put liners in It'd be cheaper for them just to put liners in instead of make it usable. Yeah. Well, that kind of is making it usable, I guess. No, it's just... Well, if we were trying to fix the fireplace, we'd have to replace that through the whole way down, you know? So oh, you, know, you, you can't use a stainless steel liner on it? Yeah, we could, but we'd it'd have to replace it the whole way down. We wouldn't be able to go inside. We'd have to remove it, put the liner in, and you know, insulate the liner. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing? Trying to make the house. No, no, I don't want you in my way. Get out of my way. I'm gonna try to lean this one. level so uh, the next one the next one will go straight up yeah and we'll just have a this will actually be probably close to the finished amount of space we have between each one right here it's just like three fingers which is fine that's all we need we just want to get a stainless top plate on this without hitting the stainless top plate on that one you know good How's that for twisted? Pretty square. What do you think? Huh? I don't think it is. Is it square with the chimney? It looks pretty good by eye. Yeah, close enough, huh? <coughs> Alright. <coughs> Grab a trowel today, you're just gonna watch. I already grabbed one. You gonna hold it? I already said I'm gonna lay brick. 
I said I, I literally already told you I do not want to just sit there and watch. You don't want to watch? I already said, word for word, I don't want to just sit there and watch. What did you do yesterday? Dude. All right, well, we got a few on. Uh, five on the front, so five more to go. And uh, we're in pretty good shape. It's a nice day today. It's about 10.30. We can't really get to the job till, I don't know. We always get here a little late. It's a long drive down, so. Uh, we're doing fine. We're actually gonna go get lunch before uh, we decide to mix another batch. We're out of mud now, so. Just gonna do lunch early, try to beat the rush. Um, shouldn't be much of a rush at 10.30 if places are open. Uh, that's what it looks like. We're just, we're gonna leave the joint until we get back. Um, if you're curious uh, what the jointing looks like after we're done, you know, obviously I, this all has to be cleaned up, but that's pretty much what the joints look like. And uh, I like it because I like the exposed edges of the brick. You know, when we round join them, we lose all these edges and then the joints look just look fat, you know? So I've been getting away from round joints and, and kind of doing it like this. It just shows the edge of the brick. I like it a little better. Um, and you, you know, you have time to, to join it. Like we can let this set up for a bit and even if it still starts to harden up, it's not a big deal to join them after. Uh, yep. And uh, the obviously this you know we jointed this while it was wet and it's get some uh it's just got this gray haze on here but i'm not worried about that gray haze that stuff will clean right up all right here we go We're back from lunch got some mud up on the board take a little video here not gonna video for too long because my battery keeps draining pretty quick.
Normally I wouldn't be walking back and forth like this, but I forgot my mud board this morning, so I only have one. I meant to have another. I'm thinking I might just put a bucket of mud over on that side so I can just work out of the bucket of mud. Not very, not very fast to be walking around the chimney while I'm laying like this. marked out. You think you could cut it? It's an expensive mistake. Is it something you think you can do or not? I mean, probably, but... But what? Shouldn't be too bad. I mean, I wouldn't think. I know when I was your age, I could cut flues like nobody's business. Well, so I've never seen a day for years. I learned that on my first day. Yeah. Yeah. Five more flues were ten bucks each. Thank you, huh? I wonder how much they actually were. I know for a fact that an eight by eight flu was like seven dollars or like seven fifty. And then I think an eight by twelve flu was like must have been ten yeah, ten bucks. Must have been ten bucks in like twelve or thirteen some for a thirteen by thirteen. And now it's forty dollars. Forty-five. No, it wasn't forty-five, was it? We had to pay taxes on it. Oh my God, taxes! Hate Massachusetts. Take three bucks right there. glasses.
Okay, so I'm up to the point where I'm going to start bumping my uh, my crown out, and uh, I'm just going to corbel out four courses, I think. I'll step back and see how it looks. I might go another one. I think Ford's going to do it with something like this size, though. Uh, I'm all parged up. I just got to, well, I just, I just hit this with my flat joiner to make sure everything's nice and flat and full before I start uh, brushing with the wire brush and uh, I gotta get these flues on which uh, it's not super easy because they're out there in the middle and um, I had to land and cut this one he's actually pretty surprised he actually made a made a pretty decent cut for me um, he was actually nervous about it it's pretty good I feel it's not perfectly straight but Really what I wanted him to do was go an inch and a half to nothing, but he went an inch and a half to the inside of this lip. He should have went all the way to the outside, but that's all right, I can work with that. And then that will that will make that flu, because it's leaning so hard uh, this way, that will make that one come up straight from there. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna set that now and uh and then i can work on my four courses i don't want to do it i don't want to do it uh after because it might be a little too low so i'm just going to do it now uh I'm, i've got a nice flat spot here uh, and so what, what i can do now is i'll just take a stage and plank and throw it across and i'll be able to step up there and and set it in like that well, it'd be nice if i had a little more head height here but i don't really want to take the canopy down right now Okay, nice and easy like. Start getting it coming square because the next piece will be coming out the top. So we'll just measure it. I'm roughly centered, and that's good enough for me not to be perfectly centered. So what we'll do is just measure. I'll measure this plank. sitting pretty pretty level both ways so I'm pretty happy with that the next one will come out we'll sit on top of that real nice I'll just have to clean it up on the inside here I'm not gonna go crazy with the inside. I don't need to have it pretty or, or sponge it or anything because remember, I'm just putting a, a, a four inch stainless liner down here later on. So uh, this isn't a working fireplace anymore. Uh, so I'll parge around the outside, make sure it stays nice and sturdy. Uh, as sturdy as it can be. It doesn't really have any wobble to it right now, but it's still, uh, I don't know. It looks weird when you look inside a chimney like this and there's no there's no supporting walls. It's just open. It's just it's not it's not the greatest way to build. So alright, that one's good. I'm gonna parge that up. I'll put the 8x8 on and then I'll do the 8x12 after. And then I'll be ready to lay these last four courses. 
Yeah. Okay, this is where we're leaving it for the night. We didn't get done what we wanted to get done. We're two courses short here. Um, but it's fine. Just can always finish it Monday. Um, yeah, so we're just going to throw the plastic over this. And we've got that flue coming up for the boiler and the hot water heater. Uh, I'll leave that one up and then I'll put the plastic over it. I'll leave this uh, tent up again. Just make sure I wire it down so it can't go anywhere. What most people don't realize is my screen is dirty and I've got to clean it. There you go. There you go, little guy all cleaned up now. People look at me up here and they think that I'm working, like I'm building a chimney, but really, I'm turkey hunting. There's some gobblers over there. Let's see if we can call them in. Let's go real easy with that. Real quiet. Sit and wait. Love you a couple bread. Do the old Marshalltown bump. Look at that. There we go. Again. Um, good. Goblets go. They're over there across the street somewhere. I heard them.
Bigfoot without even looking? Maybe. Oh my god. Right on. as we move it up. Okay, we're not gonna bang on the back of our brick, we're just gonna roll them down, so tip them in forward. Perfect. Where are these turkeys went? Just heard a stray gobble over there. Must be real cold. Just a cold gobbler. Applebee's is doing one dollar margaritas right now. Isn't that crazy? Is that crazy? Yeah, how can they even afford to stay in business? Okay, that's pretty close. We'll slide the next one just an extra sixteenth over. And then it'll be right on. Oh my god. Start gobbling like crazy. On your cut. Oh man. You're starting to get good at that, huh? Trying to. Did you cut? I'll do the work. Did you cut right around it straight the first time or did you have to fix it after? 
How do you fix it? No? What do you think's the difference between what and last year? Why are you cutting straight now? Just uh, experience finally? Maybe. I mean, I'm just. I take the blade and I put it up against the edge so I make sure it's going down straight before I cut. Because I'll just know where I hold it in my hand. And it's pretty easy to just trace the line with the swamp. But. Yeah. Alright, hopefully the chimney doesn't blow apart. I think it will. Mm, probably not. Probably not. I remember the last time the chimney blew apart. We don't ever talk about that. Where were we? An exit. Remember, Payton stepped on the was corner that? of the oh chimney. My God, that was an exit. Give me that level, please. <laughs> now listen to that turkey back there. You hear him? Yeah. <laughs> Payton stepped on the corner and the whole thing blew God. apart. I can't believe he would do that. <laughs> He's never been much of a thinker. Then again, I started up a saw when it was soaked. Yeah. Oh, that's the job. You pulled the saw out of the out of the water and just hit the button. Probably. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. It only cost me eight hundred dollars. But now look, I cut with this straw, per straw perfectly straight. I kind of thought the other one was going to run the other day. I put a battery in it and it just kind of partially turned and then just started buzzing. Okay. Maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll meet somebody that'll be like, oh yeah, you could just do this and it will work fine. Just not have your kid go put them in the water. The road and get smoked by a semi truck. Look at the guy in the parking lot, and the turkey's there with him. There's, there's a guy walking a dog, and the turkey's like 20 yards from him. Uh, no survival instincts. Four foot level on that side. Let me take my gear. Okay, okay. I 
five and a quarter. And this side is, oh, five and three eighths. So. Dude, there's one back there too. Where? Back there. You heard him back there too? Yeah. Hey. Perfect. It's in my left ear, so must have been. So uh try over there. Huh? Try one over there too. Is it up there too? That one too? You just yeah. heard that one? Yeah. It's the one I said I just heard. Surrounded. Surrounded by turkeys. I want something close. We're all converging on our position right now. <laughs> I think I only ever went turkey hunting once with you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really like it. Huh? I didn't like it too much. Why? You didn't hear a turkey or see one? Well, because I don't like turkey. You don't like getting up early in the morning? <laughs> what do you mean? I got up plenty of times really early to go deer hunting. Oh, we didn't really get a chance to turkey hunt too much. I was so... Life got so busy doing baseball all the time. I don't know. Got tougher and tougher. When the girls were born, it was hard to get out of the house. I remember we went frog hunting once. If Peyton, Peyton was there. He Peyton was little. I filled up a whole bucket full of frogs. Yeah. Where was that? A little pond. A little secret spot. Yeah, where is it? I said it's a secret spot. Oh my god, he's right there. You see him? Uh, he's gotta be right there. You hear him? He's on the other side of that, that's for sure. Alright. Get ready for the kill shot. Give me a brick. Let me get him in brick range here. Oh, is he running down? Oh my gosh, we haven't seen him. I've just ripped off a few shingles and you can see where they ran out of uh, tar paper on the roof. They got enough rolls to get up to this point and uh, from here to the top they just did nothing. And I'm assuming they did that just because they you know, didn't order enough rolls maybe for the roof. Okay, just getting the prep done before I put this crown wash on. I've just gone around and so after I got done laying the brick I, I uh, fill all the holes just with mortar and then uh, afterwards I go ha around and uh, put some bonding agent. I just kind of paint that on with a chip brush and uh, it's not really to help it bond the concrete to the to the brickwork. It's more of just, I'm just trying to seal off these pores so when I put the concrete here it doesn't dry out the concrete uh, too fast because then it will leave a hairline crack along the edge. Um, the rebar, I, I just notched those in real quick with my uh, with my angle grinder and a diamond blade. I just notch them in so they sit flush with the brickwork. Uh, I've got four of them going this way and I did put these two in here. Usually I don't need to go the other way with it too but it just adds a little bit of extra support in here because um, this is this one's kind of wide so. Um, next is oh that's the angle grinder that I cut everything with. 
So I, I notch in the rebar with that and I, I cut out the wire lath just with a regular diamond blade. Um, uh, next thing, uh, I'm gonna wrap everything with this sill seal and tape it on with a piece of Gorilla Tape so the concrete doesn't bond to the flue and that will be our bond break. Landon is down at the mixer. Uh, hopefully getting some concrete ready to come up. We actually got these bags of sand topping mix, sand mix, which is basically a concrete sand and, and Portland mix. And we just add our own Portland to it. So a uh, good healthy scoop of Portland per bag. Uh, should be pretty good to make a concrete crown wash up here. So I just got my first three buckets of of this concrete mix on top. I got just enough to cover the wire lath. Landon ended up mixing this batch kind of soft. When you um, when you do these concrete crown washes, it's it's always better to be on the stiff side. Um, that way, you know, less water, there's less shrinking. So um, this won't matter so much because we're going to be here for a couple more hours. Uh, doing some of this work anyway, so um, I just took the canopy off Just to help get some Sun on here and dry this up a bit uh, I want to get some of this water out of here So I'll just have to keep checking it over the next couple hours and and hitting it with my trowel So as it as it shrinks, I'll hit it some more and hit it some more and then um, Finally, it'll get a, it, it'll get to a point where it doesn't want to shrink so much anymore and it won't crack so Just finished the rough in here. Uh, it's pretty close to where I want it. You can see it's still pretty wet, but um, it's dried up enough to actually get, build it up and, and shape it pretty good. So, uh, so this is gonna set and I'll come back and hit it again. Now I'm gonna focus on pulling back these shingles all the way around this chimney and scabbing in the plywood. Uh, I'm gonna take this set of roof staging down and that will allow me to rip all that stuff out of there. Wait, look at this piece. This one is delaminated. This one's been getting some water, or I had in the past at some point. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna scab these back in, but man, look at the framing here. It's all like uh, framing at different levels. I'm gonna try to, did I gotta hog that down? I don't even, oh, geez, we're just moving. So I'll try to screw that. I'll secure it a little better. Oh, that's just a scab piece in there too, but somebody put it on a little too high. Okay. More stuff to fix. All right, so we got the plywood scabbed in and the edge metal is on all the way around and we are just going around with our grace. Uh, once I get this grace around, I will just patch in here for the night and Get the tidiest shingles in tomorrow. All right, fellas, I'm gonna do a little layout with you for this flash. And I just got this, um, just got the chimney washed, and we just got back from lunch. We had a late start today because I had to go pick up a shipment of lead. Um, I usually buy these rolls 20 at a time, and I had to go pick them up, so I had enough uh, 10 inch to do this job. I knew because uh, the roof is pretty shallow here. And on a shallow pitch roof, I'm typically going to use more 10 inch and 12 inch stuff and steeper pitches. I'll use the eight inch stuff. So, um, I'll walk you through how I just kind of figure out how I'm going to, you know, lay out my lead. Um, and this is how I do it when I have multiple different rolls. So I have three different rolls in the truck cause I just picked up a bunch of lead today. So I have the eight, 10 and 12 inch wide lead, uh, in the truck. So I start here and I make a little, this is the peak and I just plumb up uh, a couple courses here and just get my plumb mark. And what I wanna do is be, um, I'm probably gonna use eight inch lead here because the wider the lead I use this way, the harder it is to bend around the peak. Um, so I'll just measure I'll put the four inch right on that center mark and then just mark my eight inches from there. And so this is the mark I'm looking at on this side. And this is the angle of the line that comes down to the corner. I'm gonna look at the corner and see what I can do uh, 
with the lead here. Obviously, I can't cut it in on that course because I'm into the ice and water shield. So maybe I cut it in on this course. And so I'll look at that and see what size lead I'm going to use for that. Um, remember, I'll have my apron piece that will come up a couple inches on here. And then this piece here is six inches. Okay, so now I know I can go in an inch, uh, inch and something there and still have a little to bend over the bottom. So I'll probably use eight inch on that. And what I'm gonna do is I just use a Sharpie and I just remind myself where I'm gonna cut, okay? So, and then from there, I know that that's pretty low to the roof. And if I use the 10 inch lead, look, I'm gonna be, and, and I cut that lead, I'm gonna be way into the ice and water shield there. So what I wanna do is be up one more core. So I'll have my front piece here, and then I will mark this corner as the corner that I'm gonna, um, strike my line up to that to that left mark here on that four inch mark there okay I'm just gonna double check the height of that okay so if I just if I measure here I'm about I guess eight and a quarter to that mark and then if I measure here I'm about Eight and a half, okay? So we'll have a pretty consistent step the whole way. So I've made my little marks um, at each mortar joint. And now what I'm gonna do is just take and just, I draw a little plumb mark so it doesn't disappear when I start hitting it with the saw. And I'll remember where to cut to. And then my lead will just kind of overlap that little line that I made. And next I'm gonna do is draw I'll just draw it out, right? Because I want to visually see um, exactly what I'm going to cut so I don't mess it up. Otherwise, shoot, let me zoom out. Otherwise, if I don't draw these on there, you know, um, as a reminder of which one I cut, I'll probably end up cutting the wrong one. Um, and then what I actually do when I use when I have two hands to do this I'll take a measure and I, I know that I'm using 10 inch flashing and I'll I'll measure the end to mark the end I can see that that's the end there so I'll just have to overcut that a bit I'll have to overcut that a bit but you notice my 10 inch doesn't run into the ice and water shield so that's what we're looking for if it started running into the ice and water shield I would have to do something different um, either use uh, a narrower flashing. I might go down to the 8 inch if it was on a steeper roof or with this I would just end up saying okay I'm gonna have to start all of this one course higher and be one course higher here and then it would be one course higher here um, So I didn't get into my ice and water shield when I was cutting um, If I got into it a little bit, it wouldn't be a, a huge deal But once you start getting into it a lot then then it's not good the first piece on each corner I'm probably I'm gonna use the 12 inch stuff because I will lose a little over an inch on the front. Okay, so imagine if I use 10 inch on this front piece here, but it overhangs an inch around the corner. Uh, what I want to avoid is where this second piece comes down, okay, and I pull this an inch around the corner, so we'll put that at nine. And you can see that I've only got two and five eighths inch of of coverage um, for the lap of this piece of lead and and this piece of lead for the lap where, where this piece of lead and this piece of lead lap I only have two and five eighths okay I want more than that so I use I use the 12 inch piece on the on the first piece on every corner on this chimney that way I get back more and then I'll have coverage because I'm gonna lose that inch around here, around the corner, um, but with 12 inch it won't matter. I'll, I'll have good coverage on that first piece and then the rest of the pieces will have good coverage the whole way. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just finish tracing these out and get it all cut. Lennon's down there uh, getting ready to cut lead and yeah, we don't have we don't have too long to to get this on. You know, I I might not even get it all on. I I've got um my daughter's my my youngest daughter. She's got baseball tonight, so I mean we got baseball pretty much every night, and 
my wife's got to work, so I got to get home in time to take her to her game. Uh, so, which means I got to leave here early. It takes me an hour and 20 minutes to get home from here. So, finally got it all cut out, and we're putting our first piece of lead on. This is our apron piece, and you'll notice that I've got some shingles on, and before this apron piece goes on, we like to get the shingles all the way up and underneath the apron piece. What you're never gonna wanna do is have a piece of shingle that comes over your apron piece. I see that a lot and it makes no sense at all. Like water could get uh, right behind that and uh, you know, it gets in your nails and you have to silicone all that up, but it will rust out the nails and we're always going to keep our lead over the, over the shingles. Um, and so now we're going to work on our our next piece of flashing, our piece of counter flashing for the front. And then we'll do our two side pieces before the next shingle goes on. So we have three pieces of lead before the next shingle goes over. Okay, here we are. First thing in the morning, well it's not first thing anymore, we get stuck in mass traffic this morning, so now it's 8 o'clock. Um, but we have an easy day finishing up the lead and the shingles and, and then we're stripping staging and getting out of here. Uh, we are going to be completely done today. As you can see the chimney's been washed up. I ordered the cap yesterday to the exact dimensions. Um, basically when I order the cap I just, um, I taper this angle back quite a bit here. Um, this one's going to be a top mount, so it's got the flange and you screw through it with the tap cons. So I just measure the brickwork, right, and then the, um, with the top mounts they only go to the nearest inch. It's not like a custom cap, so you have to get to the nearest inch with it. Uh, so basically this one was uh, 48 inches by 48 inches, right? Uh, so you just subtract three inches from your total length and width. And so the, the cap size is 45 by 45. Um, and then I'm, got, I'm gonna mount the flange right here and I'll sc screw in those tap cons at an angle. I used to build these uh, crown washes a little different. I used to make them real steep right here so they were thicker all the way to the edge. Uh, and then put the cap on that, but you can see, so the cap would sit here on the flatter spot but it doesn't get as much of an overhang over the brick. Um, so I, I kind of started doing it like this. And also on my on my stainless uh, rain caps, I always get a five inch overhang on the lid instead of the standard three inch. Uh, it costs more money to do that. It's like, I forget, it's like 80 or 100 bucks extra just to get that extra uh, overhang, but I think it's worth it. Uh, so it's all cut out. You can see some people always ask, you know, even because they're not watching in the moment, but they think that there's nothing in here. But this silicone dries super clear at first. Um, and it is there. And I just, I don't glob it on like you normally see. So I just smooth it out and make it nice. Um, but it is there. And, you know, over time that will uh, blend a little bit better this was just done yesterday so uh, this is what the corner looks like so I've got my first piece second piece and third piece of lead on and now this shingle here can come over all the way so three pieces and then our shingle comes over all right we're gonna get at it oh actually one of the things I wanted to tell you guys about is my new tool uh, this is a um, what is it it's a lead bosser I think, that, I think I'm saying that right. So they use these over in Europe. You can't even get them in the States because we don't have lead workers here. So I finally broke down and ordered one. Uh, it took a long time to come in, but it was over the winter, so it didn't really matter. And uh, it's just a chunk of plastic. I think you maybe could make one out of a piece of wood, um, but it's actually really nice for, for like flattening out the lead and setting the lead. Um, it's not, it's not, I used to use the rubber mallet on the corners and stuff, and then and then I use this too. But it's just a cheap piece of plastic, costs twelve dollars, um, and forty something to ship it. So 
the shipping was way more than that, but it actually seems like a nice tool. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to put this first shingle here. Um, and you see how it covers those three pieces like that. Um, this right here is called a zip. Okay, because it's like a zipper. And it's the same thing in brickwork you see sometimes. You look at these overhangs here, you got just a little over three inches of overlap. Um, you really want something like this. You want six inches on an architectural shingle or six and a half. Um, yeah, so this, this does this zip up the roof here. And, you know, it, it does it the whole way. Uh, so like this is a zip right here. This is a strip. They do this to try to correct the roof. Um, I don't like the look of it, but that's how they did it. And um, I can't strip and fix this whole roof, although I don't like leaving this like this. Um, you know, I think, you know, I'll nail this, uh, behind here and I'll probably just make sure every time I nail it, I put some silicone over the nail or something, uh, just to make sure, cause the, you know, water can get in these seams and migrate over and I don't want it to rust the nail or get under the nail hole. So I'll just make sure, you know, I nail it way back here and then the, the one nail that I'll put here, I'll just silicone over it. All right. We've got a decision to make here. Uh, this piece of lead went under this shingle here, and this one goes over the top, but you see where it ends up way up here. And I've only got, I got about four inches of coverage off the chimney here, which, you know, you might think is okay, but um, what a better option might be is for me to go under this one, like this. I can get this shingle in there there we go it's close um, and now look look at that one so it, it you know obviously like way better coverage but we're just sticking down below uh, the shingle so this is the line of the shingle here so we're just sticking down below and yeah so what I'll do is I'll just take put this shingle on and then I'll nip this piece of lead here so it hides under the shingle just like the rest of them and and I can nip this corner as long as I don't nip it beyond this vertical line here have I showed you guys my new tool look at this thing this thing is ridiculous uh, no more reaching into the box to grab the hand nails um, this thing's actually pretty sweet it's kind of expensive but uh, for me working on a roof by myself a lot of times this thing is like you know, it holds a lot of nails, makes it really easy. Just like that. And uh, you notice how I stay back on, on this nail because that, this piece of lead comes through right here. And I'll just stay back on that one. And uh, it sets them pretty straight. That one went in a little crooked, so I'll just give that an extra little tap with my hammer. And I'll get one in the corner of that one. That one's going to be the one that I silicone. Man, you just never know what you're going to find under here. I found a little trap door. Just got the last piece of lead in on this side. Um, that's all done now. Shingles on. I'm uh, going to have to do these ridge caps coming in. Uh, this is what it looks like at the top. Uh, this is why I went with 8 inch instead of 10 inch. It's easier to bend 8 inches around than 10 inches. So um, it's still got good coverage. Um, and then I have a piece underneath this that's curling up on onto the... See that little corner there? Just a little piece curling up onto there from underneath that shingle. Um, and then Landon has wor been working on a couple pieces on the other side. See what this scrub's got done. Okay. Okay, you got your plumb line on here and you're ready to put this one in? Yeah. But you can't fit it because this piece of lead's too high here? Yeah. 
Okay, so you gotta stick something in there, like your disgusting trowel, and get that metal down. How'd this trowel get so bad anyway? It was clean the first day you took it up here. Okay, now there's room for it. You're gonna have to grind that off. Um, and so we'll go like that in, and the piece goes under, and then the last piece goes over. I'm getting ready to finish my last piece here, and I just wanted to show you this piece that I put under. I always put a piece under like this from the peak, um, and I just bend it up a little bit on, onto the chimney. It doesn't have to be much. Uh, and then my next piece will fold down over this and bend around. Um, and if you just, if you're ever worried that water might back up uh, beyond this piece, you can just roll it over like this and just kind of bang it flat and, and then rainwater could never, it, it will never make its way back there anyway, but if it ever, if something ever did it, uh, happen when the water got back there, it would have to, it would have to drain out. This is the last video. Uh, flashing's done, shingles are back in. We are just about to break down the scaffolding and get out of here. Got the silicone around the bond brakes. Ordered the cap yesterday, the stainless rain cap. So that'll come in in, who knows, three, four, or five weeks, whenever they're done. Um, but this is, this is how it looks. Another one in the books.